Which harmonies makes Alice in Chains sound the way that they do? Today we're going to dive into the different ways that you can harmonize two notes. And of course we're going to do that with Lane and Jerry's voice. Let's do it. There are three different types of movements you can find in counterpoint or two-part harmony. Oblique motion, where one stays the same and the other one moves around. Parallel motion, where we follow each other. And contrary motion, where one goes up and the other goes down. These are littered in Alice in Chains songs. Let's start with parallel motion. You can move thirds in parallel or fifths in parallel. Third is three notes apart, a fifth is five notes apart. Thirds, da, one, two, three, ah. Those are more, more of a pretty sound to me. You're gonna hear those all over the place. La, one note, the other note, that's a fifth. And a difference between a fifth and a fourth, uh, you know, we've already talked about the counting, so one, two, three, four, that's a fourth. But in the scale, if you invert a perfect fourth, it's a perfect fifth. And if you invert a perfect fifth, it's a perfect fourth. So you may hear me saying fifths and fourths interchangeably. Use your ear to figure out, is it open fifth or is it a closed fifth? See, fourths are badass. Fourths are what Alice in Chains does. Laying on the melody and then they do Jerry on the fifth underneath. And a lot of people could do the fifth up high, but that's too open, we do the fifth underneath, it's crunchy, it's power chord, it's, it's sick. No Excuses is a good example of parallel fifths. It's all right. On the word patience and peace of mind, Jerry moved around and Lane stayed on the same note, which is oblique. Patience, search for peace of mind. Everything else was parallel motion, and I'm pretty sure it was parallel fifths the whole time. It's all right. Now let's listen to what parallel third sounds like. We're gonna pop over to a song called Shame In You, and I know y'all love this one as much as I do. A lot of those were minor thirds moving together, and that's a pretty cool uh, jazz theory. Uh, diminished thirds can move together to create a fully diminished seventh chord. I know I'm talking a lot of theory, but I'm gonna do a video specifically on Shame and You, and I'm gonna talk about the different uh, flat nine dominant seven chords and different cool jazz theories that actually come up in this song. But for now, let's listen to this next line. Listen how close the harmonies are together. So that's just littered with parallel minor thirds, as well as there's a major third in there to kind of keep the chord together. But if you want to know more about that harmony, find my video for the harmonic analysis of Shame and You. He's hitting the third. Da, da, da. The other one is sand, sand, third apart. Sand rains down in here. I sit. Now it's mostly parallel, but in this song, you can hear like sometimes there's an oblique motion. Sometimes parallel works, sometimes it doesn't. What's cool about that is it literally takes the same chord progression and moves it up a fourth. So that's kind of nice. Now this parallel motion, when it when it's done so specific like this, is called diatonic thirds, meaning you're not always minor thirds, you're not always major thirds, you're you're doing a combination of both. You're staying within the scale, which is diatonic. Let's listen to everybody's favorite part, the end of the chorus. <laughs> to fly. 
that's the cool stuff, but they're just parallel thirds, maybe diatonic thirds. As well as parallel motion that Down in a Hole is filled with, there's some like double parallel overlapping motion we're gonna listen to at the end. Okay, it's undoubtable that they add at least three parts on some of those phrases, but we're gonna ignore those for this video. But when you were listening to the main two parts, you may hear the thirds, you may hear fifths, you may hear octaves, uh, but 90% of this song is diatonic thirds in parallel motion. Now that we've looked at one of the three motions, the most common one, parallel motion, we're gonna look at my favorite one, which is contrary motion. Contrary motion is when one singer sings up and the other one sings down. They go in contrary motion. For a good example of contrary motion, let's listen to the chorus of We Die Young. And we die young, which is just bopping down the scale. Da -da -da -da, right, diatonic movement. And we die young. Faster we run. Faster we run. First movement is contrary, then they parallel themselves together, and then Jerry bops down even lower and comes back up to meet at a third. So it probably goes, and, oh, so it's octaves. So the lower part is one flat, three flat, seven and one, and then the other one is five, four, flat, three, one. It's very simple stuff. So that's a good example of contrary motion as well as a little bit of parallel in there. It's just it's just an awesome, creative, fun, moving line and it's iconic. I've got a ton more contrary motion coming up for the last song, but before that, let's talk about oblique motion. Oblique motion is when one note stays the same and the other one moves around. Now that can go, the low one or the high one can stay static. Uh, let's listen to a good example in your favorite song, Rooster. Yeah, come to snuff the rooster. Oh, yeah. Just a lot of blues, a lot of blues. And then the other one is, yeah, they come to snuff the rooster. Yeah, they come to snuff the rooster. Oh, blues. And the second time's even cooler. Yeah. Oh, that's so sick. It's got oblique, it's got contrary, I think. Yeah, they come to snuff the rooster. So there's just two notes there. Da, 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 da. And it's a half step. There's not much movement in the top part. The bottom, yeah, here come the rooster. So sick. Let's listen to it one more time. Listen close to the low harmony, but also how it's bouncing off the high harmony in a beautiful way. Yeah. Who'd have thought their most famous song, the biggest hit, would also be chock full of some deep goodness. All right, for this last song, I picked one that's chock full of all three parallel motion, oblique motion, and contrary motion, as well as, you know, when they start adding three and four and all the different layers, who knows what's happening. This next song wasn't a huge hit, but don't get me wrong, it's a great song. Just like in Rooster, Jerry's part, or the lower part, is moving a lot more than the higher part. The higher part is da 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 
right? There's a little bit of movement, but the lower one, so long shall we reach for something. So he moves so low down there that I know it goes to an octave. So we've got a fifth, and then the lower one moves up a major second. So now we're on a fourth, and then the lower one moves down, and now we're on a major sixth. So the top one's still on this high note, so listen. And then, oh, they're on a major six right there, and then they one goes up, the bottom one goes up a half step, and the top one goes down a half step. Boom, and they land on a parallel, or uh, they land on a perfect fifth. Now, this part is more than two parts. What I wanna do is just listen for contrary motion, listen for parallel motion, listen for oblique motion. Listen to only two at once. Don't try to listen to all three, four, five. I've been spending the last month trying to listen to all the lane harmonies and it's, uh, pick two notes, listen close, click the subscribe button, and we'll see you next week. That's the weirdest solo I've ever heard in my life. Never paid attention to it before because I was too flabbergasted by the chorus harmony. All right, y'all, so remember, the chords and the notes you choose are just as important as the motion in which they flow. The, the movement, the movement's important. Stay tuned next week for some more Mad Season review and uh, go check out some of my other videos. Go listen to some Alice in Chains. <laughs>